Now, one of the mods I have um, makes it so you don't turn around in stations anymore. Um, I, I first saw this uh, this mod watching the Colonel, like a lot of us, and uh, I, I got to tell you, it's realistic. It's uh, never worked on a railroad, but I've been on many, and I've been a fan since I was a little kid. And there aren't many videos or films of railroad operations that I've seen where the trains magically flip in the station. It just doesn't happen that way. See you. Here we go. I won't go into details. They're, they're not very nice. So this is our map. And let's see. Currently, I live in the town of Carmel, here in Maine. This is not based on anywhere that's actual. This is just uh, a bunch of towns that I have either been to, lived in, or like. Um, so on and so forth. I won't go into details. Not about not 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 about details on this on this little playthrough here. Um, so what we need to do, what we're gonna do is we're going to do something. We're going to go against everything that uh, Colonel Failure has ever taught us had to do with this game. Um, love the way he plays. It's really, really a good way to play. It really is. But what we're going to start with is we're going to start with an oil train. Right at 1850, January 1st, day one. Why not? Let's do it. I know we can make it work. Uh, oil trains are one of the ways that you can sort of hack the game. They're very lucrative, and if you start out with one, you tend to very quickly get all the money that you need to do everything you want, which is what we want to do. It's about showing you what the game is about. Okay, so what you want is a refinery and a well that are a pretty good distance apart, but not all the way across the map. So I think that might be our best... Don't have to cross any rivers, same side of the river. We have one here too. And it's about as far here. But looks like there's more ridges there. And I really like following the river. It's easier to stay on the level, so to speak. So let's see here. Let's go ahead and build us a train station then. Uh, we're gonna go with a dead ender here, a terminating station. We're just gonna build it next to the road. I'm not worried about any roads. It's already connected as you can see. And there it is. All right, so let's get our tracks going. Um, what we wanna do is we wanna try and stay as level as possible. Oil trains are tanker trains and tanker trains are, are very, very heavy. So we notice our arrow here, we're gonna stay on the level. We're going to just try to follow the terrain, stay as level as we can, follow the river. Keep this cost to a minimum. All right, so here we are at this end. Go back into our buildings, spin this guy around. Okay, tracks. Just take this and hook it right up. Okay, so we have our track built. It's a fairly short track, but we're not exactly dealing with speed demon trains lately. All right, let's put a depot in. Let's put our depot in the town of Springfield. Why not? This way we can service both directions. Let's see here. Spin this around. Point it at the track. All right. And now we come out here. And we hook it up to the track. Now these are all level, or they should be. 
So these junctions should look fine. No weirdness there. No weirdness there. Now, I mentioned kernel failure because uh, I just kind of like the, the standard when it comes to this game. Uh, all right. Okay, so we got the track built. We got the depot built. It's time to build a train. Let's get a uh, line going here. We go from here to here. And so that's going to be, let's see. That's the Springfield oil well. So let's see. Let's, uh, let's come up with a naming convention because we're going to have a lot of trains, a lot of trucks, a lot of other things. So we come up with a naming convention so you can pick things out pretty easily. Um, I'm going to go with uh, rail. Um, let's go with crude oil. Supply. And Springfield. Let's just go SPR. Three-letter code, typical for airlines and so on and so forth. I've seen four, five, six-letter codes. Um, just depends on who's playing. And, well, if you follow real life, it depends on what company you're looking at. So, all right, let's, uh, that's good. Let's get a train going on this puppy. Now, looking at Steam, of course. Want something with some oomph. But one variant right now. 120 horsepower, that's uh, that's not a lot of oomph. 45 with that one, 35. All right, let's go to John Stevens. Um, doesn't make a whole bunch of sense, but, uh, you know, uh, we'll just go with that one for the heck of it. Add tank cars. We have 4,300,000 we could spend. And we're going to spend all of it. Poor, I'm not worried about that right now. Just needs to get down the track. It's a level track. Okay. Train is bought. Train is dispatched. Alrighty. Let's get this thing rolling. We're going to go at high speed for a while. To surrender out. We'll let that render out and uh, render out. Let this cruise along. Such an interesting chain, this one. Or engine, anyway, John Stevens. And now, uh, right down here, there's already oil waiting for us. we'll be able to pick almost uh, pick all of it up now one of the mods I have um, makes it so you don't turn around in stations anymore um, I, I first saw this uh, this mod watching the kernel like a lot of us and uh, I, I gotta tell you it's realistic it's uh, never worked on a railroad but I've been on many and I've been a fan since I was a little kid and there aren't many videos or films of railroad operations that I've seen where the trains magically flip in the station. It just doesn't happen that way. So I make mine reverse. Just me. Watch this puppy cruise along. Now, again, there goes the puppies again. <laughs> I'm always talking about puppies. So it's not a very long one, but we have almost a full train. And we'll see what we get. Should be quite a bit. There we go, 1.1 million. All right, that brings us back into the positive. We'll let this do its thing for a little bit. All right, we have to build up some cash because we blew our whole lot on that thing, but it's okay. It'll take a little bit of time. We can explore the map a little bit. Now, if we're going to continue with the uh, the oil gig here, um, should stick with it for a while, do mostly oil stuff. Um, eventually, we want to get all of 
the towns connected and all the businesses connected and so forth and so on, which we'll do slowly over time. I forgot to start my timer. I try to run a timer so I'm not talking you guys' ear off for, you know, hours. Could happen. Could happen very easily. Now we're getting quickly overloaded here. So we'll need to add more trains to get this going. Here he comes again. And these are just short stations too. I'll have to add those. You make them longer later on down the road. I don't think I have to be in this game, but uh, it does make it a little bit easier uh, as far as, uh, well, for me anyway, visually. So we're completely full, as you'd expect. We have some money, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to manage the vehicle. I'm going to edit it, and I'm going to add another one of them. Doesn't seem like much, but every one you add adds a little bit more. Bigger, longer train, more money. We like more money. Hopefully that uh, sneeze button I put in works better. We're going to modify the train again as soon as we get into the, to port. That's where port. And still, as soon as we get in the station, I'm going to be doing that again. But you'll notice we're going to get long for it pretty quick here. All right. And we'll manage the vehicle. Edit. Okay, can't do that. All right. 18 cars on the thing now. Now, what I need to do is something I should have done before. Let's, um, yeah, we can't do anything about it right yet. We don't have any money. No money. That's the way it goes. But we have all kinds of oil to move. As you can imagine, um, the usual way to start this stuff is to find a short route that you can do with trucks, um, something that'll give you a lot of turnover. This right now is getting us uh, freight one direction, but it's not that far, so you can do a, a few of these. Um, you know, as you can see here, with frequency is nine minutes, so now we should get an entire. Boatload accrued, 126 units. That works. But as you can see, the train struggles. The heavier it gets, the more it struggles. I'll just sit here and watch it go by. Such a funky looking train. It is a van This is a vanilla train, I believe. Um, this isn't one that I downloaded. But we're able to keep this on the flat, which is going to get us, uh, you know, some some motion. Uh, we do have our first. The way that I do things is is we have our first um, utility building in Springfield here. So this is where I'm going to go ahead when we have the money and build our um, our headquarters. I'm going to build it right. Uh, I'm going to build it right next to it. Right next to that. Let's see what we can do. Then we're going to start paying back our loan. It, it, this is kind of uh, it's going to drag a little bit. Um, tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to I'm going to uh, just keep plugging along. That's what I do when I play this. Just made more money. So kick into this. Get our headquarters. Build our headquarters. This is one thing that drives me nuts about building the headquarters: having to move that out of the way. Dang it. You're hitting the wrong one.
That'll do it. Okay, so our headquarters is placed. Picking up more oil. 500 grand. We will... Finances and repay 500 grand. Now we got 126 like we did before. We'll add some more as we go along. Upgrade the uh, the engine too here in a little while. Now as you can see our date's rocking right along and that's okay right in the beginning because there's not a lot of changes that happen at, you know, as the, as the beginning goes along. So for the first few years I let it rocket right along and then I'll switch it down to, uh, you know, uh, quarter speed. Oh, that was the train going by. Okay. So, yeah, like I was saying, um, had some minor things happen uh, while I was uh, over the summer. Made for a very uh, difficult summer. Um, first, I was dealing with the medication from the type 2 diabetes. Um, a, uh, a medicine called Victoza which is very effective. It does what it's supposed to do. Unfortunately, it tends to, um, tends to cause a, a lot of really severe nausea in some people, and I happen to be one of them. Um, so we pay back some of our loan here. Anything we can do to uh, drop the uh, interest payments, as you know. Uh, nobody likes to rent money. At least you shouldn't like to rent money. Uh, renting money in life is... In my opinion, the worst thing that you can do. Um, you know, if you don't have the money to pay for it, then you probably shouldn't be buying it. It's, you know, just the way I think about it. Okay, so... So this is our town of Springfield. This is the town that's going to be the center of our, our company, our corporation here, because that's where we started. Um, all right. Where was I? Oh, yes, I was telling you about my summer, wonderful summer, and why I've been away for so long. Well, um, so as I'm dealing with the severe nausea and the uh, dealing with stuff like that, I uh, sat in the yard trying to help my wife with some things. Um, as you can imagine, the severe nausea and stuff destroyed my energy levels and, and just kind of made me really sick. Um, so I was out in the yard trying to uh, help my wife with some things, and I tripped over a stick. Yep. Went face first into the ground, tripped over a stick. Um, and I pretty much, I broke my right wrist, um, a little bone in the, in the base of my wrist and dislocated another bone in my wrist. Um, so yeah, is a break dislocation just from falling on the ground and slapping my hand against the ground. It was the grass too. It was the lawn. It's not like I fell on concrete or down a flight of steps or, you know, got into a barroom brawl or anything, you know, flashy and ridiculous like that. But, uh, yeah, so dealing with that, of course, I'm not ambidextrous when it comes to using a mouse and all that other stuff. It was very difficult to, to do anything with the computer this summer. And it's finally on the mend. It's finally feeling better. And, of course, because I have type 2 diabetes, it takes forever for things to heal. Here comes some more money. We pay another 500 grand. And I think we're going to buy one more of these. All right, so now our little train here is up to 133 that I can get. Back that out so we don't have to listen to that. And we still have plenty of oil down here. Oh, yeah. Now, this is already out of hand, so um, there are some things that we can do um, once we have some money again. But this is one of the fastest ways to get started, in my opinion. Um, we're getting it to 1854. Um, that's where we're at now. I'm going to go ahead and drop it down to quarter speed. That will slow the date down, and I leave it that way until about 1900. Uh, whether I'm going fast or slow, or it doesn't matter. Um, that way you get to play through all the stuff and build your network and all that other things before you have to start modernizing. Otherwise, you got to start modernizing right away, and that can be 
Well, expensive. Let's just say expensive. Very, very, very expensive. All right, so we got 133 on there. As you can see, the train's moving even slower now. 12 miles an hour. Wonder if it'll get to top speed this time. It might. It might. Oh. Auto save. Now you'll notice this won't fit in the station anymore. I don't think it has any effect on the way anything works, but uh, it just, it looks bad. So when we get to the station, we get our payday on this one. I'm going to go ahead and uh, and adjust the stations to make them a little bit more uh, yeah, believable lengthwise and so on and so forth. So They fit the train better, that kind of thing. As you can see, this is a ridiculous length to stuff into this little tiny station. But, good money. Gotta like the money. Alright, so let's get out of the station. And then we'll hit pause. And... If we can do this by configuring it. Let's, huh. Let's, let's let him move a little further down the track. We're going to configure this by bulldozing it. That's right. Make it go away. Go back in here to buildings. And this time, 320. That should inherit just fine. And now we got to adjust this. This is how you end up with all those wonderful swoops in the track. All right. We're not even concerned about the speed. We can't even go 59 miles an hour yet. Okay. So that's done. Let's go down to this side. And we're going to do the same thing. It's going to lose our oil, but that's all right. Let's get that pointed roughly in the same direction. Alrighty, now we're going to get another swoop this time, but we can straighten that stuff out. 51's not too bad. All right, and let's get it going again. It'll start rebuilding that oil pretty quick. Lots of good oil workers down here. Full on production. These are our consumers. So far, we're only delivering to that one, but we are transporting 45% of what they're ordering, which means we can probably fit in another train at the current length that we're at. Now, we're going to get less oil this time because I don't think we have 133. No. And we probably won't either. But that's fine. Ninety-nine. Love that little whistle. That thing just kills me. Little adjustments. Not too bad. So, yeah. Um, so, I broke my wrist. Ended up in a brace for the, most of the summer. Um... I guess they don't cast them anymore. Um, at least mine didn't need one. I had something. I don't know. Um, but yeah, it was uh, kind of put a damper on everything that I usually do. Um, a lot of stuff I needed to get done around the house this summer that I didn't get a chance to get done because I couldn't really do anything. So, you know how that goes. Um, but it's on the mend now. We're heading in towards winter up here in Maine now. Um, 
aren't many days over 50 degrees right now, and it's only uh, November 15th. But uh, coming up on Thanksgiving here in America, and ought to be a good time. There was plenty of length now for this train. And eventually we will be shipping both ways. Uh, we'll get a sort of mainline thing going on. So, now that we've got this money coming in, let's uh, pay back some more of our loan. Under $3 million now, which is good. Let's look for the next place that we can send stuff to. We have crude oil and refined oil. We can go up here to make plastic. Could do that. But that's across the river. Is there anything on this side? We do have an oil refinery right down here. Interesting. Hmm. I wonder. Anything down on this little spit of land? Nope. Another oil refinery over here. This is a fuel refinery. I think I said oil refinery. It's a fuel refinery. And Lakewood right here needs, well, you know, fuel. Uh, let's see. Now, one of the things I can do that will get the train producing both ways is I can go ahead and do a truck route from this station here where that train can drop off refined oil over here and then the same truck route can deliver the same trucks can deliver fuel to the town so let's see got to make some more money we got a full load getting filled up there so yeah otherwise it was a quiet summer nice summer here in Maine Never got really too hot. It never usually does, but it is what it is. So the rattle money is back. We're uh, doing what we can. This first episode, I'm going to keep it to, uh, well, let's see, right now we're around 20, 25 minutes. So going to try to keep it a little bit on the shorter side. Um, and then in between episodes, I'll, I'll uh, build up cash and, and give you a report on some changes. Um, we're going to try to take care of this truck route right now, though. Let's pause it so we don't lose all of our money. And let's build a commercial spot right here. And trucks. This is not going to be trucks This at, at this point. It's going to be horse and buggy. Got a really close friend of mine, Eric, who watches these videos. I, I try to keep him entertained. He, uh, he likes the horse and buggies. So... Got to make sure there's horse and buggies, at least for a little while. Eventually, there'll be Kenworths and Peterbilts, but you know how that goes. Okay, so here we go with another one. And then we need a spot to drop stuff off in town. We don't need anything big, so we're just going to do the truck unload stop. Here's our, all our fuel users. They're the ones that are most important to this thing, so we will pop that right. Oh, that's weird. Why does it drop them guys, those guys out? Huh. Well, drop it off right in front of this person's house. There we go. Make our routes, 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 whatever you want to call it. Trucks to there. Okay, so we got refined oil coming in from there. Coming over here to make fuel. And then fuel, go into Lakewood to heat the town. All right. So, since uh, Lakewood and the production of fuel is our thing, we're going to call this uh, road. Um, let's see. Fuel. Fuel production. And... Like a, all right. Now we just need a truck depot or stable, whatever you want to call it these days. 
it's uh but it's slightly outside of town Alrighty. we are going to buy cargo vehicles the only one we have or max a piece let's get um let's see we have six hundred thousand dollars i don't they're 23 a piece let's go with uh 20 that should be about a little over 470 i think yeah 477 let's do 20 of them because they're slow they're very very slow and put them all on fuel production okay get back to rolling Wagons rolling. Wagon train. Yeehaw. Ah, Head them up. Move them out. All that good stuff. So, yeah, they wear top hats. Why not? Um, Got to keep them in a uniform. All right, so that's on its way. It should start making some stuff. Now, yep, we're starting to get refined oil here. So, on the next trip the train makes... We'll have refined oil and eventually what we can do is we can we can tell the the, the horses to uh not leave until they're full that kind of thing it it just depends on how things roll out here let's uh get things cooking right along with the train for a minute So what I'll do in the meantime um, is I will go ahead and uh, let this bed in and just get these two roots so they're uh, they're doing their thing, spread out, and the trucks are spread out and doing their thing, and and uh, we will check in with you on the next episode. So thanks for stopping in and checking out the Rattle Bunny's Den and staying as long as you have. I I, I hope that uh, you'll consider subscribing. Uh, just in case you're not sure, subscriptions on YouTube don't cost you a thing. Um, if you are worried about uh, things costing you something, it, it would be a membership to a channel or something like that, which, which I don't have set up right now. The only thing you can do right now with my channel is, is subscribe and wade through the commercials that YouTube puts on there without my say-so because I'm not advertising it. And yeah, so if you would, uh, give us a like, a thumbs up, and uh, subscribe, and we'll we will see you on the next one.